By the length of this video, you can probably tell it's going to be a chill one. Right now, we are back from an NFL game, and we're going to sort through all the photos, and I'm going to take you from dumping the photos to what I send to what I decide to edit. So this is going to take a while. It's not going to be a short one, but uh, I thought it would give you a lot of insight, and maybe it's something you throw on in the background. Maybe it's something you want to watch all the way through because you'll see my entire process and I'll talk you through sorting things out, a little bit of editing. But yeah, I just thought this is something that I would love to see from a photographer that I enjoy watching. And so let's get right into it. Let's start dumping footage. Right now we will need a CF Express Type B to USB-C converter. That is because I shoot on the Canon R5. So we got a full card right here. And then I have an SD card jack in my computer, but you also might need an SD to USB-C. We're going to be working out of Lightroom, but first we need to dump all of the photos. Okay, so we are on the computer now and going to grab this CF Express reader, plug that in. And then grab the card from the EOS R and we're going to plug that in as well. So right away you see both EOS Digitals pop up here. I wish there was a way that I could change the name so I knew one was the R5, but once you get inside of that folder, you'll be able to figure it out. Right on this home screen of my hard drive, you see a bunch of folders from different projects, different overlays, LUTs that I like. I'm going to create a folder and then name it NFL because this is the first NFL game I'm shooting on this hard drive. Right click and we will go week 14 Bears versus why am I forgetting who they played? Lions. Okay, and then inside of there, we're going to make a folder called Raw Photos. And then another folder called JPEG Photos. Let's dump the RAWs, then I'll explain why I have any JPEGs. Because I'm a raw photo guy, I'm not a JPEG guy. I like to like, I like to edit my photos. I like to like my photos, that'd be a hysterical thing to say. I like when people like my photos, so I shoot in raw. So we will go and we will just select all of the photos. You can do it this way which might give you a little bit of a hard time because when you drag it starts freaking out. Just hold your mouse until it stops freaking out. Drag it into the folder and from the R5 we took 2,181 photos which comes out to be 75.65 gigs. Not terrible. I shoot in a compressed RAW format whenever I'm doing these games just because I'm shooting so many photos and the compressed RAW gives you enough data to edit after the fact but you don't have to worry about the file sizes too much or filling up my 256 gigabyte card. Next we're going to go to the USR, make sure that it's the right stuff. So you see RAWs and JPEGs in here. You're going to go right here and click sort by kind because right now I'm going to grab those separately. I'm going to go here to the, all of the CR3 files, scroll down until you can't see them anymore, and then drag that into the raw photos folder. Mm. Still spazzing out. Still spazzing. I think I got it. Okay. Now, you see the JPEGs here. These are all the same photos. The reason I have these JPEGs is because I shoot and I send them immediately. I'm sending these photos real time. So you might have seen me talk about it before, but when I'm on site, I have an adapter that goes from my phone to an SD card. Whenever you pull RAWs on your phone, the phone is just a lot slower. And the program that we use to send everything, it doesn't handle RAWs at all. Honestly, I've been told it doesn't handle RAWs at all, but I haven't experimented with it. Last year, we used Slack. Slack could send RAWs, but the other end, the person receiving, 
I always had a hard time opening them, so I decided to start shooting in RAW and JPEG. The RAWs are really only for post-game, and they're so that I can edit them however I want, and then the JPEGs are to send immediately. Really, the only edits I'm making on site are very simple corrections. So if it was a little too dark, I'll just pump the exposure in the iPhone camera app. If they were a little bit too bright, I'll bring it down. But usually when you're too bright on a JPEG, you just got to make it work. So maybe you just bring the highlights down a little bit, bring the overall exposure down, and then actually bump the shadows. So now everything's loading. Everything is dumping onto my hard drive. I'll be back in a few minutes, but I'm just gonna wait for this to all dump. All right, so now everything is dumped in the raw photos folder. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the JPEG folder and I'm just gonna drag those JPEGs in. We can have that working in the background. These files are gonna be a lot smaller, but I don't need them for any of the organization that I'll be doing. I did this differently last year than I do this year. Last year, I was just sending the JPEGs. This year, I go through and I sort out through all the RAWs, and then I export the RAWs and rename those because then they're JPEGs, but it makes it a lot easier on me because I don't have to go through twice and go through all the photos that I want and organize all the different photos that I might use in the future. So this is an easy way to kill two birds with one stone, and um, we're going to... And now let's hop into Lightroom. A little sneak peek there of my photos I have coming up from my trip to Southeast Asia. And now we're going to go over here, grab this raw photos folder, and you're just going to drag it straight into Lightroom after you clicked import. Now give it a second, and there you go. You start to see all of your photos flowing in here. Now, there is over 2,000 photos in this folder, so it's gonna take a second for everything to load and everything to actually show up. But you can actually click import before everything is loaded onto this screen. So we'll click import and then up here, you'll see it start to load. Now what it's doing is it's giving you previews of all of your images. When you're in the library tab, which you see right here, this, is going to be a much better place to view or sort through your photos and then develop is really only for editing because when you're in develop you're looking at the full resolution scale of the photo but when you're going through them you don't really need to do that all you need to do is go to library and see a preview because it's all about the composition there you can zoom in zoom out but you don't need the full scale 45 megapixel version now this is the uh, not so exciting part, but this is whenever we just start sorting through them. You scroll through here, you see one, you see 2,436. There are a lot of bursts here, shooting on the R5, shooting sports just in general. There's a lot of times where you're just holding down the shutter. Whenever a big play happens, you can't just take one photo. It amazes me how those film photographers back in the day would get these amazing shots and they could just get one photo at a time. A lot more luck back then. Now we can use technology to our advantage. But before we do that, we're actually going to go to somebody who's not a uh, sponsor of the channel quite yet. But we're going to throw on some music in the background. This is typically whenever I'll turn on a podcast, but can't do that right now. That'd be kind of annoying for you to listen to. Or turn on some music I usually listen to. But, uh, you know, the game of YouTube. So let's see. Let's find a playlist that I want to listen to. Okay. That'll be good for now. I don't know if you can hear that or not. If you can, cool. If you can't, it'll keep me sane. So it'll make the video better. Let's start by double clicking in the gray area of that photo number one. So now my process here is that if... It's a bear's photo. I'm going to click six, which will make it red on the bottom. If it is a lion's photo, I'm going to click seven, which will make it yellow on the bottom. And then if it's of both teams, so pregame meetup, or it is, or it could be postgame jersey swap, then we're going to click eight. So six, seven, eight. This one, I'm not going to sort out, so we're going to click 8 again. That'll make the color disappear. So let's go through them.
That would be a cool one. I can edit that. A big reason why we shoot in raw is because this sky right here, I should be able to bring the majority of that back and not really have to worry about it too much. Look at John out there chasing him. And then we click nine, which is if there's any behind the scenes. So any shots of the other photographers or anything. This is my boy Tim works for the Bears. Got to hook him up with some BTS of himself. Now these are in a weird order because some were on the USR, some were on the R5, and I am very guilty of not having the timestamp right on my cameras. So they're all in weird, out of whack order, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day for something like this. There are jobs where that gets annoying, but for things like these, the photos show up out of order, but they're all there. These were DJ Moore's touchdown, but since I shoot manual focus on my B cam because the autofocus isn't as good, they're all out of focus, so we're not going to send any of those. So these are all B cam so far. You can see the process of me running over there. Like, that's a great one. Cool. Some Justin Fields portraits here. Okay, now, now we are at the beginning of the game with the R5. So they should all be R5 moving forward. We got Amon Ra St. Brown running here. I don't think that's anything we really need to worry about. I like that one, though, so we'll go 7. Aiden Hutchinson. Whoops, I accidentally made it red. Today was the My Cause, My Cleats game. So these right here are some isolations on the different cleats. These were Tyson Bajans, but you'll see a common theme during pregame where that was my main focus. Justin Fields cleats. Get some full body of the cleats too. Keep in mind, I'm not sending every single one of these because that ends up being just annoying for them to sort through. They just need one good shot. So we'll give that to them so they don't have to do what I'm doing and spend hours going through their different photos that multiple people have taken was cool to see how many players had custom cleats on really during pregame though i think it's a rule that they're only allowed to do it during pregame or it might just be a comfort thing missed the farm These ones were hilarious. Look at this. Got the McDonald's for, the, for like the Ronald McDonald house. And look, the Grimace shake. These are really, really cool. I mean, I think they were painted all over. I think the whole red is custom painted and it's on a pair of Jordan 1 cleats. Those are probably my favorite from the day.
as you see, I'm just kind of going through, spraying through all these. You don't need to think about it too much. If there's a good photo, it's a good photo. Something like this, once I brighten it up, that's going to be a good photo. Josh Reynolds there, he ended up having a touchdown during this game, so that's a good photo to have. Got to get the wide receiver core. More cleats. These are fun ones to get here whenever the players are stretching out. These stretching ones are really fun to get because you can just get right up in their face, obviously within reason, but you can be right there, really the closest to the players that you're going to be all day. You will see me so many times grade the photos in the wrong color. Um, but that's something you can fix after the fact. It's not that big of a deal because I'm going to have to go through and rename all of these anyways. So coming up here is one of my favorite photos that I got on the day. This one of Amon Ross St. Brown in the huddle. It's just so cool. It's such a unique perspective that you never really get because you can't be in the huddle. And even the fact that he's the only one not wearing a helmet is kind of the cherry on top. Chad getting a similar one of Goff, but missed focus. See, these are the things that you usually never see. Aiden Hutchinson going into the tunnel. These ones are with the 400, or these ones are with the 200 to 400 millimeter of Jared Goff during the anthem. I mean, that is just sick. I love that one. The facial expressions are always the best. Aiden Hutchinson with the eye black. This was the first play of the game. Tell me that's not a late hit. That's insane. That didn't get called, by the way. Who was that? I don't know. So now I got to be kind of careful of how much I grade like Justin Fields throwing because you don't need to do every, you don't need to send every single one. Ones like these where you miss focus, but it's of the linemen. It's a good shot to have just because those linemen, they, they love having photos of themselves too. Can always crop these in. Keep in mind this is a 45 megapixel photo, so you can crop in really as much as you'd like. It was nice to see Justin Fields actually scramble during this game. This is one of my favorite photos from the game. You're seeing the raw here, so don't judge me. The Raws aren't always great. That's definitely the best one.
as you see, as I go, I'll grade some and then I find a better one and I'll go back and I'll take the mark off of the previous. It's just because I don't want to send four photos of the same sequence. You really just pick one from the sequence and then send that one. Um, it looks like you end up sending the same photo over and over again. Look at this lineman getting in my way. That would have been a great shot. These are little moments that I try and get. So there was a field goal here and nobody's really going to get that. But I was thinking, where can I shoot this field goal that will actually be interesting? And getting the kicker is not going to be very interesting. We're never going to use that photo. But maybe right here you get a shot of the head coach celebrating, even just clapping, high-fiving some guys. Did it end up being a shot that is amazing? No, but... You got to think outside the box a little bit. I got one a few weeks ago during the Broncos game, and it was Sean Payton, Russell Wilson, Cortland Sutton sitting there watching this game-winning field goal happen. And that's better than just seeing the ball indent whenever the kick happened because that shows no context. But seeing all the players actually interacting with it, that shows context. Side note, Jameer Gibbs, he's a dog. He's going to be really good for a long time. Look at that. Focus. Focus. The one shot I would really want. Out of focus. Well, I guess I wouldn't really use it, but out of focus. I think we'll probably get a celebration here. Nope, not really. Look at the detail on his face in this one. I love this lens. Look at that. Yeah, we'll go two from this sequence. These ones are great. Avain Hutchinson getting the sack. Then we get some good celebration. I love those ISOs whenever nobody's behind them. Once again, get some of the coaches during the field goals. 
or these ones were during the field goals. <coughs> Also, you got to realize every photo isn't going to be the most insane photo you've ever seen. Deliver some photos of the players who <coughs> didn't have the best game of their life because, you know, everybody still loves a good photo of himself. If the players are going to use these, oh, that's so good. We're sending a couple from this sequence. Look at his eyes there. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm going down hard. Look at this. It was going to be a punt return. Look at the punter come in. Wrap his ankle there. I mean, that's the tackle. That's an open field tackle for the punter. <clears throat> so I'll go through all these. Let me uh, gate her and put on something. Last year, you saw my NFL vlog that I did. I was shooting one yesterday, or whenever this game was. <clears throat> I was shooting one yesterday, and I stopped because I was kind of just feeling like, oh, this is the same video I made before. Yes, there would be little differences, but I'm curious... Is that something you would want to see again? Do you want me to put a little bit more of a twist on it and talk more about you know, how I shoot for the edit or where I'm on the field typically? Things like that. Or do you just want me to make the same video again? Or do you not want me to make another one? I'm shooting one more game this year, I believe. Um, so I could do it at that one. But I don't know. I just... I had this feeling where I was like, oh, I already made that video, so I shouldn't do that again. These are great ones. Nope, I got to go back, though. I graded these for the Bears. Jeez, okay. But, yeah, let me know your input. Should I make another NFL vlog? Should I not? Should I put a little bit of a different twist on it? I don't mind whenever people make the same video twice, but I don't know. A vlog, it's going to kind of be the same thing. It's at the same field, shooting the same team. So it's kind of a weird feeling you get whenever you're doing it. So now I go with this one over this one because look how distracting it is having the ref right in the background there. This celebration might not be as great, but you could always crop and get the ref out of it. Really killing it with focus here, huh? Oh, that's going up oh, out of focus, man. It's really exposing how many shots I get that are out of focus or there's something wrong with them. This was touchdown number two for DJ Moore. And this is where you saw those previous ones um, where they were out of focus. That's whenever I ran over with my wide lens. This is the tight version of it. 
Mercedes Lewis with his one catch of the game. It's crazy he's still getting catches. Crazy even he's even still getting playing time. He's one of the biggest humans I've ever seen in person. See, like, we could always crop in on that. I know it's not a great shot right now, but we could always crop. But that's where he tried hurdling them. I got a great one of this the last game that I shot, but didn't get the hurdle this time. These ones were after Justin Fields' rushing touchdown. If I would have sent them like this, I don't think the Bears would have used them. But when I dumped on my phone, I cropped 4x5 and punched in a little bit because I know that these photos have the ability of being punched in on a lot. But they'd be a little nervous about it, rightfully so. They don't want to hurt the quality of the photos. So I went ahead, punched in for them, and they ended up posting it. Who knows what happened if I didn't do that, but I like when they post my work. So I'm going to continue to do that if need be. Ones like these are great, too. Maybe Davis will want that. That's a good team defense photo right there. <laughs> That's kind of funny. On the ground, calling the first down. So we're getting to the end here. This is just the sorting process, and then next up I will export them and then rename them all. That was really close to being a pick. That was weird. I was just trying to think. Took some video. Oh, that's a great one. He might actually post that. Sick. Let me go back and double check this. I know Montez Sweat was looking for uh, looking for some photos. Get some shots of him in a Bears uniform. This was the game ceiling interception from Edmonds. Unfortunately, they didn't really run my way with the celebration, but can get a little bit, something at least. It's like his second or third pick of the year. So right there, we went through all of them. Down on the bottom, going to click the red rectangle now, the yellow one, and the green one. I don't think I graded any green, but this will show me that I just went through and there's 194 photos that I will be sending. Not holding any for my own really just sending them the ones that I think they would want all the photos that I actually liked that's what I will be sending to them and so what we're going to do is we're going to toggle off the green and the yellow click on that first one go all the way to the end hold shift click on that last one they're going to go command shift e this is how you export I'm going to rename them so it's going to be bears and then space dash space. I'll explain to you why in a second. One is good there. 
and I'm going to go 75 quality. Choose. Now we're going to go over and we're going to choose the folder that we want to export to. Create a new folder and it's going to say bears to send. Create. Choose. And then we're going to click export. I'm going to do the same thing now with the lion's photos. Click on that first one. Go all the way to the end. Hold shift. Command shift E. Now instead of bears, obviously we're going to go lions. Now for my settings, I'll scroll through quickly if you want to see. It's really nothing specific, but this is what it is. The quality varies. If I want to print something out, it'll be 100. Typically when I'm exporting just for social or something like that, I'll go between 50 and 75. But the uh, custom text one is just where you can name your file in Lightroom. So you don't necessarily have to go back and rearrange where everything is and also you can choose the folder, which is really nice right here. So choose the folder, go back, NFL folder. Instead of bears to send, this folder is going to be called lions to send. Same thing, export. Now up here, you'll see them begin to export. And this is whenever I am going to go through my phone and on my phone, Okay, so now we're screen recording and we are going to go through all the photos and videos that I have on my phone from the game. So these are from the previous game. But all of the photos that you see on here are typically from the ones that I dumped and was sending in game. But the videos that you see are some iPhone videos. So right here, this is a player just hanging out on the bench getting all zoned in you know a good little moment because we are supposed to shoot iphone and it is great for those little intimate moments and shooting it on the iphone makes it much more approachable than if you were shooting it on your camera vertical even so right here we got cole Komet. i'm just going to go through and i'm going to favorite every single one that i want to send aiden hutchinson just these little moments Got Justin Fields walking off. Yeah, we'll send that. I know I have this good one of him giving out an autograph too. Also shot this one on my camera. Gotta love 120 frames per second. Got some of David Montgomery since this was his first game back in Chicago since he left for the Lions. Got some of the fans. Another one of David Montgomery. Good storyline from this game. This was of the mascots cleats since I mentioned it was the My Cause My Cleats this week. So this was the mascot having them on. Cool little detail that they did. Team running out. Flyover. I got an interception on my phone since it records some in-game stuff. Yeah, here's Jalen Johnson's interception. He's really put together a year now. He might get a deal. And then some post-game stuff. We got Cole Komet walking around during post-game. Another one of him. Montez Sweat walking around in post game. A little jersey swap. Another jersey swap. So now we're going to go to the album, go to favorites, and we're just going to grab all of those. No fancy workflow here. I'm really just air dropping them to my computer. It's, uh, yeah, nothing. No little secrets here for you. It's the same way you get your files from your phone to the camera or from your phone to the computer. Good. M3 just came out. I don't think it's worth the upgrade, but we'll see. Okay. So now I airdropped all of those. We'll make another folder. iPhone to send. Okay. 
Now we'll go to downloads. All the downloads we will drop right into that iPhone to send folder. And now we just go on a spree of renaming. Now the renaming process is different for everybody. Um, I like to do it similar to how the NFL likes to do it. And so it's very simple. We'll just watch this clip and I'll run you through a real example. So this is Cole Komet. So we'll go Bears because that's the team that's happening. And then the name of the player. So Cole Komet. I could also just put Komet. Um, if you don't know the name of the player, but they have a jersey on, you could just put their number some way for somebody to be able to identify who it is. And then pregame stretches. I'll just put stretch. Pregame stretch. There we go. And now you just continue to do that. Now we got Aiden Hutchinson. Oh, still go. Lions, Hutchinson. I don't know if that's how you spell it. And then pregame. Now we got Bears, Fields, Autographs. Make it a little bigger for you guys to see. Got to see who this is. Right and commit. <coughs> Brisker Jersey Swap Bears Fields Autographs Slow Mo. Okay. Now all the iPhone stuff is all sorted out. Exports are done in Lightroom, so now it's time to just tear through these 130 Bears photos and then the 64 Lions photos. There's nothing glamorous about this. It's going to take a while. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to go through them, and uh, we'll talk when we need to talk, but 
you see this is why I put bears on the export so it's one less thing that I have to do here I can just delete the number and the other dash and then I can label them as I see fit um, it saves you a little bit of time but really not that much you'll see me start to copy and paste some things but let's just get into it Most of these players, I'm not going to know whose cleats they were. Um, so I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to put MCMC. I think these were Nathan Peterman's though. So you can't name the file the same thing as the previous one. So you just have to throw a two at the end or change it up in some way. Still easy to find. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, since I'm not really gonna know any of the players that it is in the photo, I'm just gonna go my cause, my cleat, MCMC, same thing. And then I'll go one. Then we're going to copy that. Actually, we'll just copy the whole thing except for the one. And then we're just going to start ripping through these. Two. Three. All right, got through all those. What MCMC number was I on? 14. Okay.
Okay, so you get the gist of it. We don't have to go through all these together. This is going to take forever. But let's move on to the next step, and this is deciding which ones I'm going to edit. Now, we're not going to edit them in this video. We'll do that in another one. If you are curious about that before this video comes out, though, I do have one from last year where it was an edit with me, but I do want to take you guys along with how I edit these photos that you've seen me sort through. But let's go through the ones that I am going to actually edit. So what we're going to do, we're going to toggle the red and the yellow. So these are all the photos that I've sorted through that are actually relevant and that are actually good photos that were willing or that were worth sending. So going through, I can see this one being one. So we're going to go five stars. At the bottom there, you see those five stars pop up. This doesn't interfere with them being red, being yellow, any of the sorting between bears and lions, but it is a way that I can group them all together and then isolate them once I'm done sorting through the ones that I want to edit. So just tog on through the different ones. This one, love it. I can really see myself cropping in on one of these. So I'm going to grade them both five stars right now. I'll show you an example. So right here, go here crop in tight there obviously we'll edit it a good amount but cropping her out and having that light coming in on his face right here you can really make these portraits look nice i got them of aaron Rodgers last year i got one of jordan love this year i got them of quite a few pe jalen hurts i think i got one too but i got them of a lot of different people last year and this one i got of justin fields so i was happy to finally get one of him now continuing going through them I have better photos of Amon Ra, so I'm not going to use that one. Maybe I'll use some of the my cause, my cleats, but I want them to be wider. Might use this one of Amon Ra. I feel like I could edit it cool. I think I changed my mind. I'm not going to use the my cause, my cleats. This one might be a good portrait to use too. I like that he was in uniform for the other one though. How my eye works with these is how can I really spice them up in the edit? And after editing quite a few times with these photos, I know one like this, I'll be able to crop and just kind of straighten it out. And then I'll let you in on a little bit of the secret sauce here. So I'll go to the mask and we'll go select subject. This one, it'll be easy, select Justin Fields. So now you're gonna right click, duplicate and invert mask. So now you have the background selected and you have him selected. One of the ways that I get my style, obviously I'll dive into it more later, but I'm going to drop that dehaze so it gives this nice glow, drop the clarity. Now it looks like I was using like a f.9 lens. Maybe drop that. And then overall, we're just going to add a little bit of vibrance and saturation. Um, that looks horrible. Now let's go to him. Maybe add just a touch of clarity on him. A touch of clarity, a little bit of exposure. He looks a little purple and not blue, so we'll go to the green a little bit. And then up the shadows, drop the highlights, pump the contrast. And that right there is a little bit, so before, after. That's not at all how the photo is going to end up looking. I want a little more contrast in the background. But that is how my eye works. I see an isolated subject, and I'm like, okay, I can isolate him even more. Let me edit. So that's why I pick a photo like this, even though the raw doesn't look that amazing. Whoops. If you accidentally click six instead of five, don't worry. Just click Command Z. It'll come right back. And we're being uh, not very selective right now with all these different photos. I want to use as many as I can, and I don't want to narrow them down too much because once the edit begins, I'll be like, okay, I can use that one, but this one isn't that great. I know for a fact, I'm going to use this shot of St. Brown. And so I'm going through just sorting out the ones that I think are good enough to edit. This one, 100%. Love this one, a Hutchinson too. I can even see myself cropping in a little bit here. A little bit, let's see. 
Like, I love that. Look at how sharp he still is. 45 megapixels used to the max. This could be a good Hutchinson one if I crop in a good amount. You see he is the sharp focus here. So let's give him five stars. I like this one of Justin Fields slipping out, even though there's so many people around. Oops. This is one of the best shots of the day. Once I isolate him, which I'll show you a little bit of, because I'm curious too. Subject might not work perfectly here. Yep. So we're going to go ahead, grab the brush. We're going to start brushing out what we want to subtract from that mask. Nice thing is, you'll only have to do this once. I'll tell you why in a second whenever I show you. Biggest thing is actually making sure that he isn't in the same mask as the people next to him. Because if he is, he won't be separated from that background nearly as much as you want him to be. So you want to isolate him from the background, making sure he's not in the same mask as this cameraman. These AI tools are usually good, but as always, they're not perfect. So now we'll brush out this side of the cameraman and a little trick here so that you can make sure that he isn't in the same selection as anything over here or anything over here. You can go to subtract again, linear gradient, and then go right here all the way to DJ Moore's toe. And we're going to do that again, linear gradient, same thing right here. Now you see there's still some on the cameraman's chest, so we'll go back to that brush, deselect him, all that. We're actually gonna go to add. We're gonna add to DJ Moore's foot because I clearly see that that's not selected. Maybe his glove up here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so now we're going to right click. We're gonna duplicate it. Now we're going to right click and we are going to go to invert. So now we have the whole background selected and we have DJ Moore selected. DJ Moore, brighten them up. You see there's still some of that guy in the background. Go with that brush. Oh, I had the wrong brush. I was adding brush. We're just gonna command Z that. Okay, now we'll go to the deselect brush. We'll deselect him. Now I think we're good. You go to extremes to see what the different. Oh, wait! I thought I inverted this. So now you go to the extreme to see what's selected, what's not. A little bit of his head, but that's okay. That'll actually help us a little bit. So we'll drop that, drop the exposure. I'm just showing you what tools you can use to isolate the subject. So now once we go here, we'll brighten them up. We'll add a little bit to his head. Go back here and we'll subtract. So it's actually inverted because we inverted the mask. We'll subtract from his head. I mean, this isn't going to be perfect. You're going to think I'm a horrible editor after this. But you can you can separate him from the background there. The biggest thing is making that making sure that the mask is only on him and not on anybody behind him. And then you'll be able to separate him and make it look amazing. Moving on. All right, maybe, maybe, love the celebration ones. This song stinks.
So I'm going through and realizing that a lot of these are going to be formatted wide when I edit them. So when I crop in, it'll be good, but I'm going to keep them wide. I like to do the white frames with the top and the bottom, some vertical, but I shoot mostly wide during the game. And then I look to crop vertical when I need to. Okay, five, five, not sure which one of those I'm going to use. I love these with the emotion on the face. Go Jared Goff, ISO. The celebrations with the other team in the background, there's something about that. It's from a storytelling perspective. I love it. Another DJ Moore touchdown. All right, so those are all the ones that I'm going to edit. Let's see what the count is. 69 right now is what I'm at. I did grade some from the same sequence, so I'm going to have to go through and actually pick those. That's going to come down to how I see the edits going because the presets that I've created in the past, they're not for sale, maybe one day, but some of them are better for cloudy weather, some are better for sunny, some are better for night games. So I'm going to have to figure out which one's going to be best. And then that will give me the idea of, oh, this one from the sequence will be better than that one. Or they're more isolated in this photo than they are in that photo. So that's kind of how my brain is thinking. But that's how I go through all my photos after a game day. It takes a while. I mean, I think we're probably about an hour deep now. And uh, probably more than that, actually. But going through starting with 2,300 photos, narrowing it down to 200, and then you have to actually sort them and you have to name them. The naming them takes a while and it's not glamorous at all, but it will make your life and your client's life easier whenever they're going to look for the photos after the fact. So thank you for watching. We'll pause the music for the outro. Thank you for watching. I will be coming out with an editing with me video from this exact game. So stay tuned for that and look out for these photos on my Instagram. Let me know what you think. And we got one more game that I'll probably be shooting this season. It's on Christmas Eve against the Cardinals. Looking forward to that one. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're not already. And as always, here are some of my favorite photos from the past week. Peace.